The sponsor for this podcast is Blevins Insurance and here's what their customers have to say. Great insurance rates and customer service. We'll search for the best possible rates through many insurance companies. For more information, go to blevinsinsurance.com or call 765-446-8999. Mindful Businesses with Vidya Iyer from the recording studios of Q1067, Lafayette, Indiana. In our podcast, we bring to you brands which are mindful in their practices and processes. Mindful manufacturing, simply put, is sustainable, social, economic, and environmental practices adopted by a business. Today, we have the pleasure to have with us Dave Mash, the co-founder of Palm Energy. Palm Energy has a proprietary blend of two plants, which makes biodegradable, environmentally friendly straws. Good morning, Dave. We are happy to have you with us on the podcast. So there is this a lot of this talk about plastic straws. You know, different states are banning them, and our seas are getting polluted with them. Tell me something more. Is this is all just? hype or is it all true? Give me some numbers. Okay. Well, thank you, Vidya, for having me here. It's quite a nice, you know, to be uh, talking to you this morning. Yeah. Um, uh, what we having that has been happening as trends in the past few years has been um, an environmental uh, consciousness that, uh, you know, perhaps we need to consume and enjoy our lives, but also think of um, the less capable uh, creatures that we live with, that we share the earth with, you know. And so the more we pollute the environment, we actually affect those other life forms that cannot mitigate the situation. So as, as human beings, we would have the control to say, okay, where we are polluting, how can we have sustainable, non-pollutant materials that still enable us to enjoy our lives, but at the same time, we preserve the, the environment. And, and, and I think, you know, the package, food packaging space is one of those areas where it's, it is interesting that uh, we've become very addictive to plastic. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, plastic is a great invention that was invented by a, a Belgian scientist, you know, who became an American. But we've become so addicted that everything in our lives, you know, from the cars that we drive, is plastics from our utensils, from our beverage drinking, and indeed from the straws that we're talking about today, mm -hmm. it's all plastic. So where does all that plastic go when we use it? You know, you drink your bottle of water once, it's packaged in a plastic. You use it once. Where does that plastic go? You use your straw once, where does that plastic go? And then those are the questions that you know, I believe there are challenges and they create also economic opportunities. And this is where companies like ourselves, uh, you know, we find ourselves coming in to say, okay, so these are economic opportunities where we can mitigate a problem and provide a solution. Awesome. So give me some numbers. How many straws are consumed in the United States alone and how many of them end up in the ocean? This is interesting. Um, crazy numbers have been, uh, you know, reported all over and it, it is easy. You can Google any one of the big uh, uh, media establishments and, and you will hear figures of around 500 million plastic straws are consumed every day in the United States. Our own research, however, um, gave us, you know, um, a more conservative figure, which is around 400 million. And uh, we still that's a lot. That's still a lot, you know, yes. because 400 million, you're looking at what, about 40 school buses loaded with straws every day, mm -hmm. you know. And so it's not much difference, you know, uh, 500 million straws and 400. It's, it's more or less the same. And so, you know, single use plastic straws, you'd hear people advocating that, oh, no, but they can be recycled. But it has been proven, at least for now, with the technology available, it is way more expensive to recycle a single-use plastic straw. So manufacturers will simply use fresh raw material, mm -hmm. you know, ethylene and, you know, right. raw materials from petroleum to right. make a brand new straw than to try and recycle a very thin material that has been tainted with coloration, etc. It becomes more expensive to recycle. Yeah. So ultimately those straws, they find their way into uh, our, ref our garbage refill 
landfills where they do not decompose. <laughs> Some of them, they find their way into our waterways. And um, unfortunately, uh, marine life cannot differentiate between a colored plastic straw and a worm that would be dinner for it. So right, at times right. you can have your right. marine life consuming that, thinking, oh, that's lovely dinner, you know, mm -hmm. whereas actually it's a plastic that is indigestible. Right. You know? yeah. So how many states are banned up to now? Do you have that information? Yeah, we, we, they, there is some uh, numbers that we've, we've, we've gathered. Um, as it now, you have roughly about 22 states in the United States have cities, major cities and towns that have banned plastic straws. And to give you an example, West Lafayette, right here in Indiana, just um, in the, I think in the last, last month okay. or so, mm -hmm. uh, they banned straws, Perfect. you know. And uh, you have universities like Purdue, which is our largest university in the state, uh, you know, uh, deciding that in its campuses, it's moving away from plastic straws. Mm -hmm. But that trend is happening all over. So you, you have in a conservative Indiana, you have that is happening, but also you have also in other major coastal uh, cities and states, California, New York, you name it, uh, the ban on plastic, you know, in those cities is happening. So it's not yet at state level, but cities and towns are banning in those states. How did you stumble upon this idea? You know, you don't wake up one day and say, I'm going to like disrupt the straw market with my palm straws. <laughs> It's, it's innovation is is amazing. Uh, but, Did you, know, you have background in food technology? No, what I, I, your... I don't have a background in food technology. I'm, I'm a mechanical engineer, and then studied my um, my ordinary MBA masters with the University of Liverpool, you know, in the UK. So, as the noise about plastic straws gathered steam, uh, it became one of those things that unconsciously. You know, one is away of the problem, you know, around you, you know, and at times you begin to, you know, you stumble upon what would be potential solutions, you know, and you begin to experiment with, as an entrepreneur, you begin to experiment with different combinations and you, you, you know, you stumble upon something that you say, oh, okay, this looks like it works. It's actually, you know, it's a no use invention of existing materials and combining them so we've been able to register it as a as a provisional patent so we are patent pending on it yes so i was doing a little bit of research before uh this podcast and i found there are many alternatives there are steel straws glass straws bamboo straws straws made out of i don't know different things so yeah. how does you how is your product different tell me a little bit more about your product all right thank you yeah video that's a good question yes there is there is many straws, different straws. One could argue you can make, you can shape any material into a tube. Right. Like pasta. Can, like pasta. Yes. <laughs> yes. You can take even mud, you know, <laughs> and shape it into a tube. Yes. You know, the, the key issues is at what cost mm -hmm. is such material able to render a product that would be competitively priced because you don't want a solution going into the market that uh, is too expensive for consumers. This is when consumers begin to resist. Uh, there's, you know, you have consumer resistance when things are too expensive. So yes, there are steel straws, there is glass straws, etc. But we believe we, we're not serving that market, which is the fast food consumption market for single use straws where the product has to be affordable. Affordable and also, you know, I don't want somebody else's glass straw. I'm not sure how clean it is. You know, in, in, if it was used like in a restaurant setting, it's okay if in, in my home. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah for those, personal use. Yeah, yeah, those those are for personal use. Yeah. You know, you, you talk of glass or steel from a hygiene perspective, mm -hmm. they, they become personal use product not a product that is used from one consumer to the next consumer, you know, by a hundred people in one day, you right. know. So perhaps those would serve a different market. So if you want to have straws in your house, you know, that you throw in your dishwasher, then of course, maybe you can have glass straws and, you know, steel straws. But, you know, in a restaurant, it's a whole different market. Right. The sponsor for this podcast is Blevins Insurance. 
Blevins Insurance specializes in putting together packages for your home, auto, life, and business insurance needs. They are backed by multiple reputable insurance carriers. Blevins Insurance is great at identifying potential gaps within your current insurance policies. They are licensed to serve insurance in multiple states, including Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, and Tennessee. For more information, go to BlevinsInsurance.com, B-L-E-V-I-N-S, insurance.com. I also saw these bamboo straws, you know, yeah. and I also seen pictures of your straw. Your straws look very smooth. They look really beautiful, I think. Whereas the bamboo ones were a little bit more, uh, you know, like pokey. And I think those were also probably for personal use because, you know, you wouldn't be throwing away the bamboo. So they're also because they'd be far more expensive than yeah. your straws, you know. So compare mm-hmm. your straws to the paper straws in terms of how durable they are. Like right now, I was asking a uh, few people, do they like straws? They said that the difficulty with it, they have a lot of difficulty with paper straws. You just like dissolve mm-hmm. in your drink, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, on paper in your drink. <laughs> yeah. So tell me about uh, w- why is your straw superior to the paper straws? That's a great question. How is it superior because of the method of production, the materials that we have combined it's actually not two plants but it's three plants you know and when you combine these three plants they bond together to give you a super waterproofing material well shaped into a straw but because they are plant materials and in their own right singularly they are also edible in fact they are FDA approved so they will rapidly biodegrade in less than 21 days just like your domestic food waste so this is something that you won't have Mm -hmm. with paper paper is gonna you know you're gonna take what 45 maybe 60 days to biodegrade but like you said you do have the technological problems with paper you know Perhaps it's still also a developing technology in that, you know, they will fall apart, you know, they will collapse when you're trying to yeah, drink yeah. your smoothie, right. you know, and so they will soak, they will become very sticky and soggy, you know, you know that feeling of sucking on a wet towel, right. <laughs> you know, and you don't want that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, yes, there is paper straws, you know, but we, we, we set out to uh, say, let's create a product that to the greatest extent possible it can mimic the usability of plastic minus the negatives of plastic and minus the drawbacks of paper. And we believe that that is what we have created. I wanted to mention that Palm Energy is a startup started at Purdue Foundry. Is that correct? That, that is correct. That's yeah. correct. And um, they are ready to launch in the near future. What will your brand be called? You know, How will I distinguish Palm Energy straws with some other straws, which are which also are biodegradable? Well, ours will simply be called a palm straw. Palm straw, and, okay. and yes, um, it has been great to be associated with uh, Peru University business startup and incubator and accelerator program. And we were privileged to be enrolled with Peru in that program. And that's where we developed our startup to where it is now. Mm-hmm. So it will be simple, you know, palm straw. And, and of course, we'll have our own branding and our own packaging, etc. But those are still in the oven, not yet ready to, you know, I know our competitors are listening. So, yes. So, I, you know, there are also these stirrers. So will you be making stirrers? Because I think they're a nuisance. Yes. And actually, I never use stirrers because I just think they don't even do the job of stirring. Yes. I, I always like ask for a spoon, right. spoon yeah. and use it. It is interesting, Vidya, because... When we talk of the 400 million straws every day, that also includes your stairs in your convenience gas stations where you're buying your coffee and you're using a plastic stirrer. And when you look at a plastic stirrer, it really just is a miniature straw, Mm -hmm. you know. So it also, it's part of those numbers we're talking about. And yes, you know, our product is developed to cater for the broad spectrum of the market. 
Mm-hmm. And so in terms of uh, one thing that I found out about the paper straws, because you know, we also in our family, we switched from plastic straw to paper straw. The paper straws are really expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, so in terms of price point, can you tell me approximately, would they be the same price as paper straw? Well, yeah, that is a good question. And we set out when we did our uh, customer discovery and market research, one primary concern that we picked up from the restaurant market segment was the issue of price, you know. So you had restaurants, give an example, in the San Francisco Bay, Bay Area, and I was there, I was talking to restaurants, and they said, look, you know, we have switched into to paper, but paper is between five to ten times more expensive than plastic. And as you know, your fast food rest, uh, restaurant business is uh, a very cutthroat competitive industry with fairly low margins, Mm -hmm. you know. So a slight increase in an input cost, you know, really does erode on their bottom line. So, Give me some numbers. So how much do 100 plastic straws cost and how much do 100 paper straws cost? So so people understand. A a, a, a plastic straw costs a fraction of a cent. Yeah. So 100 probably costs a dollar or something. A plastic straw will cost you about, you know, half a cent. Okay. You know, or point four percent, but a paper straw will cost you around two and a half cents. So that's five times more, mm. and the two and a half cents is really uh, a fairly good conservative right. uh, figure. Our product is competitive. We are aiming for the plastic. Uh, we, we are within that range of saying, you know, here's a product that competes with the plastic or goes as near as possible to plastic. We may not be able to on one-on-one comp- match plastic, but we are as near as possible. And uh, it's probably fully mechanized, the whole process, right? It's 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 mo- uh, mostly machine-made. There is no... Yeah. Okay, just Absolutely. like a process. Like, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And is it made in the United States or overseas? We would make it here. First manufacturing base, you know, is... is we, love, we are an Indiana yeah. startup. We want to be here. These opportunities to be in other states, but we feel we would want to be expand as an Indiana headquartered company and, you know, be there to not only produce a product for the national market, but also our raw materials coming out of our farmers within the state. So there's a value chain that we feel we can add into our state. Honestly, Dave, I was really surprised by that answer. I just assumed it was going to be made overseas. And my next call of question was <laughs> like, yes, but, you know, what about the, you know, the shipping and you know, the destru- destruction to the environment by bringing all these boatloads or shiploads of uh, straws? Yeah. But, you know, uh, I'm happy that it's yeah. you're able to have uh, the production done in uh, in Indiana. Yeah. And um yeah. So, and uh, so the price point is comparable. Um, so, you know, and uh, do you, did you tell me like about when you would be in the uh, launching? In the next number of months, we, you know, um, we're working out to achieve certain, certain milestones that are related to uh, the capital investment. Mm-hmm. And once those milestones are attained, then we're going into launch. So, you know, what do you t- t- uh, tell the cynics who say, you know, on an individual basis, you really cannot change, bring about impactful change in the environment. We need lobbyists, the government, and them to be on board. It doesn't matter if all the restaurants stop using plastic mm-hmm. straws. So what is your response to them? It is interesting. You know, you have local authorities in towns and cities, city councils, passing bylaws, legislation, banning straws. So obviously that has got an immediate impact in so far as achieving the goals of reducing pollution. It is by legislation. But one would also look at it and say, you know, does it have to be driven by legislation? In our own consumption habits, ultimately we are rational human beings that... You know, as, as we find alternatives to substitute what we all know is a pollutant, by all means, let's, you know, put in our, our efforts, our technology into that regardless of legislation. So what does that mean? What that means is we cannot, we, we're not focusing on selling our product in the areas where plastic has been banned. We are also going into the states where 
it's not been banned, you know, in the cities where it has not been banned because we believe on its own, it is a compelling product for a, a, a problem that everyone accepts is that we are addicted to plastic. No one can dispute that. You know, and um, the straws are so beautifully made. Um, I really like them. And I was wondering, what would be the next thing, you know, for you? Do you think you could develop this into, uh, I'm not sure, like, you know, a substitute for plastic for, I don't know, maybe the ties, the garbage ties or, you know, something else. I don't know how sturdy is it. Is it like fairly... Yeah. Um, Resilient uh, or something? Or? Uh, yeah, for, for, for the purpose of a drinking straw, uh, we are happy with it. Uh, in terms of expanding into other products, that would uh, be within the R&D, future R&D uh, opportunities. Uh, how do you play around with the... The mix, mix, and, yeah. mm -hmm. and the mixing and, you know, and how do you improve, etc. But now, the, mon the moment you talk about R&D, you're now talking of huge... Uh, sums of, of investment money and you ordinarily you'd want to do that out of your retained income right you know out of your retained profits and then you know you are investing your profits into enhancing products into increasing the the variation of product offerings you know so but that would be in the future for us all right Dave thank you so much for sharing uh, all this information we await your launch and hope we can bring you back as this uh, mm -hmm. successful company from Indiana started at Purdue Foundry so listeners we have with us Dave Mash the founder of Palm Energy of Palm Straws which makes uh, straws out of two proprietary materials thank you again thank you to Jim Stone of Q1067 FM playing the best of yesterday and today in Lafayette, Indiana for letting us use his recording studios for this episode. Thanks to Jim Stone and Ryan Martin, our technical editors. Um, music for this podcast is composed by Tatum Gale from Brooklyn. We are in Indiana. Jim Stone is in Indiana. Our technical, uh, another editor is in uh, Philadelphia. Uh, Dave came down from uh, Indianapolis. This just uh, tells you how easy it is these days to work with people from all over. Uh, this is Vidya Ayer for Mindful Businesses. Mindful Businesses.